again. You've really got to stop doing that. Braxton. I've never even heard of a Braxton. Got nothing for you. Sorry. Oh. In that case, he told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town. Whole family had fallen sick and he had some meds on hand. So maybe look for him there? You want to know what I think? This Braxton fella threw away the trappings of society and joined a pack of wild raptodons. I never knew him. I was a stowaway. That's what they call orphans who grow up in the back bays. Who the fuck are you? Oh, gosh. Hey, what are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Berta already pissed by those crates to market. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business. I don't think so. You're a loose end now. Heads up! Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. But if you're here for him, I suppose that means you aren't here for Saltuna. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. Seems like you're having a rough time, Mr. Sanjar. Are you doing quite all right? Oh, don't worry on my account. This is merely the latest in a long line of professional erotic and athletic disappointments. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called hazard clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for 10 years now. now. We've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the 
off the books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Yes, freedom is a tempting ideal, but a rather costly paramour. Can't imagine why you'd sneer at the notion of a free colony. Could it be because you're an agent of the establishment? I used to be young and idealistic too, but you can't run a city on high-minded ideals. Indeed. Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. But will that help the people here, Mr. Sanjar? Keep them fed and safe? That's precisely what I'm trying to do. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. I was starting to get bored listening to you until you said the phrase extremely powerful ordinance. It is quite the rush. I'll need to gather some supplemental materials, but I mustn't get ahead of myself. You do tend to do that. The Bolt 52 will be in the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? But that's terrible. What happened? But that means we won't be able to log their testimonies. If there's one thing I've been hoping to re-establish in Stellar Bay, it's proper documentation for legal matters. Celia, I do hope you're taking notes. I've got to remember some of these quips. Indeed, sir. Still, your intervention in the matter is much appreciated. Please consider this payment for your services. Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. Back then, it was known as Terra 1. Really? I always thought they were refreshingly straightforward names. After all, the whole point of terraforming was to make them Earth-like. Here, though, the results were mixed. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to, but there were others of us who saw an opportunity, the chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. I hope you'd treat them nice, whether it was good business or not, Mr. Sanjar. That's what being in a community means. Treating people right, because it's the right thing to do. Word of advice, Sanjar. If Parvati's got something to say, you do well to listen close. Mm -hmm. A noble thought, Miss Holcomb. Unfortunately, noble thoughts rarely sway board policy. 
Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. That's what I thought! But the senior executives laughed in our faces and insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. Yes, some of us stayed behind, and as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms, as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. I don't think I realized how far they'd stoop. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. Your first mistake was expecting the board to cut you a fair deal. I understand the sentiment, but if we can't rely on some sort of framework, then what do we have? I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Yeah, and once you go back to him, he'll own your dignity too. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community, and being cut off means slow strangulation. Indeed, we've got to consider realities, not ideals. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Oh, believe me, I've learned that much. But I'm also not going to leave MSI at a disadvantage. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. Sounds like the board gave themselves the power to arrest an entire planet. They would say it's for the greater good. Yes, making all of MSI criminals in the board's eyes. Rather hard to run a business that way. What can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest Saltuna and Halcyon. What can I do for you today? Or is he not paying you on account of how he tried to fix the thing his own self, and busted it even worse, and then said you wasn't fixing it fast enough, so he's docking your wages again? Not that I got any prior experience with such. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on a raptid on acid. Laws, no! Sometimes it's canid teeth, or mantis warm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. I reckon she's got a little bit of a squish on this fella. He's sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. I couldn't! What if he says no? Hey, maybe you could ask him for me. I, I mean, a no would still be bad, but it won't be quite as embarrassing if you ask. Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this 
quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. You think that's what I'm looking for? <laughs> You're funny. Not in Stellar Bay. Everyone else who isn't taken either smells like salt tuna or they're my boss. Besides, a man with a good smile and a proportionate upper to lower body ratio isn't something to pass up. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. Did you know Junlei, grown-up? Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a woman who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. I don't know. Celia usually buys whatever I have, and Mr. Pickett seemed real interested. So I thought maybe I was onto something. Mr. Pickett? Franklin Pickett from Edgewater? That's him. He'd been here years, but he always talked about going back to Edgewater one day. Sure. Mr. Pickett used to run the community center outside Edgewater. He had this grand idea to make it a museum for Halcyon life. As my dad told it, Mr. Pickett was always going on about getting a Manta Queen for the last display. He left the Vale, gosh, years ago. He came to Stellar Bay years ago, just before the board cut us off. Ended up stuck here. He was always real interested in our monsters. Manta Queens, especially. Sure, they're real big. Hard to miss them. Well, I could send you to the same place I sent Mr. Pickett. But I haven't seen him in a few weeks. To tell true, I'm starting to get a bit worried about him. Captain, can we look for him? I'd feel awful if somebody from home was in trouble and we didn't do nothing. Tell you what. I'll tell you where I sent Mr. Pickett if you promise to look for him. Help him out if he's got himself in trouble. Fair deal? Thanks, Captain. All right, then. Leave town through the southern gate, the one right here, and head past the abandoned ruins. Last mana queen I saw was in the wilds out that -a ways could be Mr. Pickett still out there, too. Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days, but I've been meaning to ask her how that wrapped it on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Oh, no, that's not it at all. She's smitten with you. 
You smited her. Smoot? Smoot? Don't get me wrong. I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady. Always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Give her a chance. Give yourself a chance. Take her someplace nice. Okay. I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. That's the spirit, Sebastian. Be yourself. Between you and me, Captain, I'm not sure Miss Celia knows him too well. But we can hope, right? I want them to be happy. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Not to worry, if I never buy another Raptodon tongue, It'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back to work look. Anyhow, thank you. You ever seen a real life Saltuna? What do you mean live? Saltuna comes in cans? Felix, Saltuna is a kind of fish, lives in the ocean. You knew that, right? Are you serious? You tell me there's a fish made entirely out of Saltuna? <laughs> Never mind. I'll tell you later. like those old Sundays when we'd unload some tuna shipments to the cannon. We gotta go exploring. I wanna see some savages. like in the cereals. I wonder who used to live here. Do you suppose anyone remembers anymore?
A visitor? What an unexpected surprise! Please, come in. Come in. We're armed to the teeth? What's he gonna do? Kill us with generosity? That's the spirit. Now come in. Make yourselves comfortable. I'm afraid we don't get many visitors out here. The Raptodons and Marauders scare off all but the boldest. And if you've braved them, you must be exhausted. Why don't you stay for dinner? I'm sure I would remember something like that. Now, quit fretting yourself about that. Make yourself at home. Dinner's almost ready. I think I just lost my appetite. What a pleasant surprise. And just when I was beginning to fear we'd seen the last of good company for a spell. Yet the Eternal provides, does it not? The Eternal does not desire that we huddle and hide, crowded in by walls. We all share the spark of the Divine, and we were made to spread it across the stars. Out here, we are free. And even apart from society, the universe provides for us, as your being here proves. That they do. Though it's up to us to make the most of those opportunities, wouldn't you say? Look at me, prattling on as if this gravy is going to cook itself. Why don't you run along until we are ready for dinner? Oh, hello there. You come for... for, uh, dinner? Sorry, I'm not real good with, uh, names. Now, there's no call for being rude, Captain. Maybe he's just having a hard day. You don't know. You got a funny way of putting things. I used to be good with words. But it feels like there's this... fog. I... Sorry, have we talked about this before? That's nice of you. I usually feel better after I eat. Mama said dinner's almost ready, huh? You must be famished. So are we, my friend, but one can't rush a fine meal. Is it sticking again? I'm afraid nothing out here works the way it used to. There's a bit of a trick to jimmying it open. I'll see to it once we've finished dinner. Please, there's no need for incivility. Though I certainly understand how hunger sharpens the temper. I promise I'll get the door open once we've had our meal. Until then, why don't you stretch your legs a bit? A nice walk around the house will surely limber them up. What are you doing in my room? Liar! You're trying to steal the last of my rocket candies, aren't you? The ones that come in a bottle with a rocket ship on it. Like the other man used to bring. I'm not telling you.
no. I am so glad I skipped lunch. But what's this? You're tracking blood into the kitchen. Oh dear. You've been nosy, haven't you? Quickly, my dear. She's getting agitated. We can't let the meat spoil. Don't worry. We'll make this quick.
infamous Amber Heights. Everybody here looks wore out. Look me.
ever want to hide a body, you could dump it in that sulfur pool. I don't got much use for sulfur in my own work. Neat that it's here, though. Here we go! So here's the thing about Tossball. Tossball is played from the heart. Okay, I'm with you so far. Played from the heart. Easy. There are other schools of thought. Some say you gotta use your head to...